Hi, Susie Rhodes here with Past Masters. Welcome to this week's questions of the week. This week, our topic is other prohibited activities. You can expect this topic to appear on your SIE exam. We will be taking a 10 question topic quiz from within our Past Masters SIE online course. Let's check out our learning management system. All of the following violate FINRA's conduct rules, except, so one of these is not a violation. Recommending securities that are not suitable for the customer, don't do that. Guaranteeing against a loss, you can't do that either. Explaining how the ex-dividend date works. I like that. That sounds like not a violation, but let's check our last choice. Establishing an account using fictitious information? <laughs> no. So one of these is okay. Explaining how the ex-dividend date works. So you click what you believe is the correct answer. Click check answer. I know I got it right because I got that green check mark. You can click show explanation and all of the following violate <laughs> you can listen. So all of our questions have audio explanations as well. When are guarantees allowed? So you're getting a securities license. When can you make a guarantee regarding the securities that your client is going to be purchasing? Never, never. Guarantees are never allowed. Which of the following is or are allowed to share in the profits or losses of a client's account? Agents, broker dealers, investment advisors, or investment advisor representatives. So we have a STEM question or a multiple, multiple question. Of those four, it is only the agent that is allowed to share in the profits or losses of a client's account. And that is only with permission of the client and the broker dealer. Unregistered persons may, choices include receive commissions, solicit clients, engage in clerical work, or take orders. So if this person does not have a securities license, the only one of those that they would be allowed to do is engage in clerical work. The temporary hold on disbursements of funds or securities allowed under FINRA Rule 2165, Financial Exploitation of Specified Adults, would expire not later than Choices include 10 business days after the date that the member first placed the temporary hold, 30 business days, 20 business days, or 15 business days. It is 15 business days after the date that the member first placed the temporary hold. Which of the following can share in the profits or losses of a customer's account? The only one we know is agent. So not the broker dealer, not the investment advisor representative, not the investment advisor, only the agent and only with permission of the client and permission of the broker dealer. And then whatever amount they've invested in that account is how much they can share. So if they put in 10%, they don't get to share 80% of the profits. No, they would only share proportional to what they have invested with the client. FINRA Rule 5130 places restrictions on who can purchase an initial public offering. A member firm or a person associated with a member may not sell or cause to be sold a new issue to any account in which a restricted person has a beneficial interest. Which of the following is not considered a restricted person under this rule? So this is done to make sure that the initial public offering actually gets into the hands of the public. So we're looking for which one is not a restricted person. We have brother of a registered representative, mother of a registered representative, the registered representative, or a mutual fund company. 
So the registered representative is not allowed to purchase the IPO and neither is the brother or the mother. So a mutual fund company would be the answer, not considered a restricted person under this rule. To satisfy the FINRA requirement related to trusted contacts, what must the broker dealer do? Choices include require customers to provide the name and contact information for a trusted contact person, ask customers to provide the name and contact information for a trusted contact person, close accounts of clients who will not provide trusted contact person information, or place a temporary hold on all disbursements from client accounts that have not listed a trusted contact person. FINRA rules require the broker dealer to ask that customers provide the name and contact information for a trusted contact person. But that's all the rules require that the broker dealer ask. Registered representatives need the prior approval of their broker dealer firm to loan money to or borrow money from a customer unless Let's see, the choices are the arrangement is based upon a business relationship outside the firm. The customer is an immediate family member or a financial institution. The arrangement is based upon a personal relationship outside the firm. Or the customer and the registered representative are both registered with the same broker dealer firm. So prior approval is needed unless of those choices, the only time that the registered representative is not going to need to get prior approval of their broker dealer firm to loan money to or borrow money from a customer is when the customer is an immediate family member or financial institution or someone that the registered representative materially supports. In an attempt to prevent the financial exploitation of seniors, FINRA amended the customer account information rule to require broker dealers to make reasonable efforts to. Choices include get a list of the client's immediate family members, document the age of the client, obtain the name of and contact information for a trusted contact for a customer's account, I like that, or ensure that the client has an email address. So. We want to prevent, of course, financial exploitation of everybody, but especially of seniors. So FINRA amended the customer account information rule to require broker dealers to make reasonable efforts to obtain the name of and contact information for a trusted contact for a customer's account. That's it for this week's questions of the week. The topic was other prohibited activities. You'll see this on your SIE exam. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn those notifications on. If you have any questions at all about this topic, just ask me in the comments below. If you would like to check out Past Masters course offerings or to enroll in any of our programs, there is a link found in this video's description. Keep up the good work. I hope to have you as a student soon. Happy studies. You got this.